There we go. Um, so like I was saying, a lot of students feel uncomfortable with this first chapter because, you know, when you're accounting slash finance and kind of thinking about those tracks, uh, it's because you like numbers. You like, you know, making calculations and getting to a, a, a no kidding, right or wrong answer. And in this chapter, uh, is way different than that. It's really conceptual. It's a lot of words and um, definitions and things like that. And it feels kind of like, man, uh, it can kind of feel like a slow, like trudge. And, and, and you know, there's really no way around it, but I want you to understand why we do it. Um, you know, sort of like the numbers and the calculations, that's kind of bookkeeping. And there's a lot of people that can do bookkeeping. You can memorize transactions. You can memorize how to do a calculation. You can memorize how to format a financial statement, but doesn't really make you an accountant. So an accountant, not only do they have to have that technical proficiency, which is really important, but you also need to have a theoretical understanding of what's going on. And so this chapter is trying to introduce you to that and to give you a framework that's going to allow you to really have a firm foundation for the rest of your financial accounting education. And so uh, that's kind of why we start with this. That's why we spend some time on it. Uh, because we want to make sure that you're getting a mindset and a framework uh, to better understand the rest of what we do in accounting. All right, so uh, what are we going to be going for? So first of all, you know, lots of terms and definitions in this chapter, uh, and it's largely conceptual. So I know, you know, for some of you, that's going to be a challenge, but just I want you to be aware of what the challenge is going to be. Um, again, what we're trying to do is get you out of a bookkeeping mindset and into an accounting mindset. Because when you're talking about accounting, you really need to have this ability to think critically. You need to have a good theoretical understanding of what accounting is, what it's meant to do, its role in society. And you obviously need to know the mechanics. Uh, and so we're going to be integrating all that. But in this chapter, really trying to set a foundation for critical thinking and theoretically understanding what sort of the, the, the foundations of accounting are and what it's intended to do in society. And again, just so you know, you can always unmute yourself and ask a question or ask a question in the chat at any time and I'll, I'll answer it. All right, so we're gonna start with basically the environment around uh, financial accounting. Now there's a much prettier illustration in your book, um, but basically what it's trying to do is it's trying to just kind of connect the dots of how do you go from economic activity and build up to this connection to a prosperous society. And so the whole idea is whenever we kind of create the foundation of accounting and think about the role of accounting, it's not just for bookkeeping sake. It's not just so debits can equal credits and one plus one can equal two. I mean, that's not really the point. The point is that effective accounting should play a role in allowing our society to be more prosperous. And so we kind of have to connect the dots and how that happens. And so um, uh, this is that visualization, but now we're gonna kind of talk about how uh, those pieces are connected. So what are those elements that allow us to go from economic activity to a more prosperous society? How does that pathway really work? Well, first of all, there's this idea that we need to have some sort of system that quantifies and monetizes complex economic activities. Because the reality is different companies do different things. And we have all of these economic activities. We buy, we sell, we hire employees, we pay employees, we make things, we, uh, we, we transfer money, we, we do all of these different things. Some of them can be pretty complex. And so we need to have some sort of system that allows us to take what are sometimes really complex economic activities and allows us to quantify and monetize them, okay? We need this system and accounting really is that system, all right? But sometimes there are gray areas. Some economic activities are very, very clear. I sell a widget for a dollar, I sold it for a dollar, very easy. Might be a little hard to understand, well, how much did it cost me to make that widget and how should I report the cost of that widget? And what happens if, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, so there's lots of things that start to happen where all of a sudden a very simple economic activity can get very gray and complex and not clear. All right. And so this gray area creates a bigger need within accounting. So accounting cannot stop at just quantifying and monetizing. 
these gray areas create some ambiguity. And, and so with that ambiguity means we need to have some sort of judgment within the accounting framework. So it's not just black and white, although that's part of it because we're trying to monetize complex economic activities, but there's judgment that we need to apply. And that judgment allows us to take these gray areas, these complex areas, and, and distill them into useful information. And so when we talk about accounting, not only is it the black and white of things, it's also the gray areas and the judgment we use within those gray areas. So when we talk about accounting, understand, there's a lot of judgment. And the further you go in your accounting education and your accounting career, more and more judgment is required because you're just not gonna have a very clear black and white application in every situation. All right, so what happens? So if we have quantified and monetized economic activities, we've used judgment to distill gray areas and have useful information. So if we can consistently do this, then we are going to make, as a, as a group, as, a, as an economic society, we're going to make better decisions. And the fact is, we have only so many resources. And so if accounting can play this role of taking those scarce resources and allow people to make good decisions with those scarce resources, then the result of that is society is gonna be better off. Because now those resources are put to things that are more profitable, more beneficial, more, uh, more uh, growth oriented versus taking those same scarce resources and putting them towards things that aren't profitable or aren't beneficial or aren't gonna be sustainable. Right. And so the, when we think about accounting, it really is playing this role of connecting economic activities to a prosperous society because we needed a system. We need to apply judgment and we need to make good decisions with scarce, scarce resources. And so that's that's how these things get connected. And so this really is the foundational understanding of, OK, what is accounting really meant to do? Why do we do accounting? This is kind of it. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions? All right. All right, so let's talk a little bit about financial statements, all right? So again, before we were talking about users, now we're really more talking about preparers or providers of accounting information. And so um, again, uh, you know, the, basically the way we do things is we need to provide financial accounting information to external users of that information. And the primary way of connecting internal information and providers, preparers, and external users is financial statements. So this is the way that, again, remember accounting, what it does. It says you have economic activities, you have judgment, you've, had, you've resolved gray areas, you're trying to under, help people understand how to allocate scarce resources. Well, how do I then communicate all that? The primary tool, financial statements, all right? That's the primary tool, all right? So the results of all of that effort are financial statements. So what are the four most common financial statements? Does anybody know any of them? Put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself, whatever you wanna do. What are some of the financial statements? Income statement, yep. Balance sheet, yep. Statement of cash flows, yep. One more that I haven't seen. So we have balance sheet, good. Income statement, good. Statement of cash flows. Retained earnings was kind of, I'd say, the uh, a basic version of this. So the more comprehensive version of that is called a statement of shareholders equity. A statement of shareholders equity. That's the bigger one. Yeah, Christina got it. All right. So statement of shareholders equity. Um, and what we're going to do now, we're going to spend the next 10 minutes going through an example of that. All right. So we're going to go out to Target's website. Now I need to stop sharing and then reshare here in a second. Um, so let me pull this up. People didn't like me there. Let me. Now I'm going to reshare. 
Okay, so everybody should be able to see my browser. And so if you go out to any publicly traded company's website or most of them, they will have an investor page. And that's what we're looking at here. So this is Target's investor page. Within that investor page, there's lots of filings. I mean, pages and pages and pages look like, I don't know how many pages there are, but tons of filings. What do they have? 2,190 different filings. So crazy number of filings that they have to make. This is all uh, to, to follow the rules, right? All right, so we wanna look at just the financial statements. And so the easiest way to do that is to narrow it to annual filings. And so with annual filings, the most common one is a 10K. And you can see there's different 10Ks over time. And we're just gonna look at the most recent one that was published in March, 2021. So we're gonna look at that 10K. And we're gonna use the HTML one, although you can download it and look at the PDF if you want. All right, so does everyone kind of see that? All right. So when you do the HTML one, it's gonna give you a table of contents. And one thing I wanna point out is 67 pages. So the annual filing, the financial, financial statements, 67 pages long, okay? And believe it or not, this is one of the shorter ones. Uh, a lot of them are over a hundred pages, depending on how much detail they provide. So whenever we talk about financial statements, I want you to understand we're not talking merely about four pages of information. We're talking about a lot of information around that. And, and what we've done here is we have several dis different sections. Um, so the first section really is kind of more legal disclosures, um, you know, I would say um, uh, comments and, and risk factors, but not really the core of their financial statements. Now, is this useful for investors? Absolutely. Would an investor want to know about the risk factors that the company is facing right now? Absolutely. So the financial statement is a way to uh, identify that. And so you can see they have competitive and reputational risks that they start to disclose within that item of risk factors. Okay. Um, but really what I want to get to is starting right here in uh, item five and all the way through about 30. So there's about 15 pages there from page 15 to about page 30. All of this is basically the manager discussing the company's financial performance, just talking about their financial performance. Here are some highlights. Here are some lowlights. Here are some challenges. Here are some things I want to highlight to you. Here's Here's my take on our future. Here's all this stuff. And it's just managers talking. That's all they're doing. Just, just sharing with their shareholders what they think is most important. And then after all of that discussion, all of that stuff, we get to the actual financial statements. And that's where really, really where we're going to go. And so within the financial statements, the main financial statements are for this company from pages 35 to 39. Their statement of operations is the equivalent of their income statement. And kind of this with the comprehensive income is kind of like they're the income statement. The statement of financial position is the balance sheet. We have the statement of cash flows. And then we have the statement of shareholders. They call it investment. Uh, our book calls it equity. So those are the four main statements. And then notice starting on page 40, all the way through page 60, all of those are notes to the financial statements. And those notes simply are describing and providing greater detail into the four financial statements. So you could imagine like one number and then three paragraphs explaining that one number. And so accountants spend a lot of time in these notes, making sure, did I provide clarity? Did I provide useful information and explain, okay, when we said revenue, how do we recognize revenue? How is that done compared to maybe other companies? We need to explain things. And so a good accountant or good user of accounting information, they spend a lot of time in the notes, really understanding where did that information come from? The number is important, absolutely. Probably the most important thing, but you need clarity on all of that. And so I'm gonna just kind of highlight, we're just gonna walk through the financial statements just to give you an idea. And so again, income statement, uh, you can see that under the SEC's guidance, you need to disclose three years, so 2018, 19, and 2020. So we have three years of income statements, you know, sales, cost of goods sold, 
Uh, and then eventually you end up at their earnings number. So about $4 billion of earnings and over $4 billion of earnings for Target in 2020. All right. Um, they give you some earnings per share numbers. But again, this is your basic income statement. We're going to get into more of this, obviously, uh, as the semester goes on. And then comprehensive income, we will talk about that a little bit separately. But basically, there are things that are part of net income. And then there are things that are kind of outside of net income, but still affect what we call comprehensive income. And that's this disclosure. Uh, balance sheet, you know, assets, liabilities, and equity. Hopefully you've seen a balance sheet before. Uh, we're gonna go into more detail in chapter two as far as what goes into a balance sheet, but you, uh, you always present two years balance sheets. Statement of cash flows, three years of statement of cash, of cash flows, uh, operating, investing, and financing. Those are the different parts of the statement of cash flows. Again, much more detail coming later. And the last one is a statement of shareholders. Investment is what they call it, but uh, we would call it shareholders equity. Uh, and again, different aspects, you know, paid in capital, retained earnings. Uh, AOCI is a whole different thing we'll talk about at some point, probably not in this class, but, you know, in a subsequent class. But again, this is just to give you a flavor of, of what is in a financial statement. Uh, but again, the majority of the space is all the notes. So you can see all the notes to what you just saw. This is all just further explanations of those four main uh, financial statements, okay? And that just goes on and on and on and on and on, again, for like whatever it was, like 30 pages of notes, all right? So, so on a test, I'm not gonna give you a big, long financial statement and ask you to, to pick something out, but you should know kind of what goes into one, you know? What, what do we see? You know, what do we see in a financial statement? What's involved? And again, looking at this as a nice example, I think is helpful in doing that. Okay, so we are going to stop there, and I want to see if Sarah is on. She might not quite be on. That's fine. Uh, she should be on in the next minute or so. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to bring you guys over. Is there, are there any, any questions uh, about what we talked about up to this point? Now, obviously, we got a lot to cover in Chapter 1 still. Uh, we'll do that over the next couple of lessons, and then we'll get into chapter two after that. But any questions before we, uh, uh, before Sarah gets on here? Okay. Fair enough. Wait, where's my chat? All right, there we go. All right, again, we'll just wait for Sarah. Hopefully she gets on here. Give it another minute or so. I would dance or sing, but I'm horrible at both. I am going to stop recording. <laughs>